Minus flat on the canvas. We are ready to rock and roll. Second round of action. There is a cut on Minus. Yeah. It's just <laughs> Jesus. 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 My man B Hop who got knocked uh, dropped out the ring last night. <laughs> 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 I need a little judo baby. I need me a little judo baby. And uh, let's, let's do it, Ron. Let's see what fails me next. You've got Facebook video. Let's go. Facebook video. Martial Lot. Chat. Hello, welcome to Martial Arts Chat Podcast, Martial live Martial here Martial on Speaker. Show. On tonight's show, we'll be looking ahead to UFC 238 takes place, Madison Square Garden, and of course, later we're going to be answering your fan questions. Maybe you can continue to hit me up during the live stream on facebook.com forward slash martial arts Martial chat, or hit me up on Twitter, it is at martial arts chat. Before I introduce tonight's panel, first, just a shout out to our sponsors, A1 Fight Gear. A1 Fight Gear use the latest cutting edge boxing gloves for professional and amateur fighters, gym enthusiasts and kickboxers. So local and national gyms in the UK, do yourselves a favour, go to a1fightgear.com. And if you're wanting to get in shape, stay in shape, continue trim the fat off, uh, go to beastgear.co.uk and use the coupon code MARTIALARTSCHAT where you can save 15% off your purchases for coast sliders, straps, barbell pads, all sorts of strength and conditioning products um, to suit your needs at any level really. So beast your goals this year with beastgear.co.uk. Finally, we're also sponsored by MMATakeover.com. For the real MMA rankings, go to MMA Takeover or visit them on Facebook or on Twitter. And so, to tonight's panel, returning to the show, a pleasure to have him back on, representing MMA latest, it's Dave Noseworthy. Dave, how are you, sir? I'm well, sir. Thank you very much for having me on once again. Had an awesome time last time, and I'm really happy to be here once again. It's a pleasure, man. From uh, Purely MMA, my man Matthew Penny. Matthew, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, doing good, mate. It's uh, Apart from last night, it's been about three weeks of... Uh, of cleansing i haven't watched a lot of mma since uh ufc 229 you know cr- cr- crying my drying my tears you know after <laughs> the connor loss but yeah good to be back on mate a proper 12 will help me for sure <laughs> that's it uh, from fight talk scotland it's don wilson don how you doing mate i'm good hello always good to have you on brother uh, gentlemen UFC 230 just round the corner. Uh, it's seen some big name losses to the card. We've lost Nick Diaz, uh, who else? Poirier, Luke Rockhold. <clears throat> but we do have an entertaining main and, and co main event, and that's where we're going to start, guys. We'll start with co main, in fact. Um, Chris Weidman gets possibly the greatest grappler in the UFC. I'm such a big fan of this guy, Jacare Souza. Um, let's start with Don on this one. Don, Jacare versus Weidman. How do you see it going down, mate? Yeah, this, this one came out. Uh... <laughs> Souza stepped in and everybody was instantly like oh Souza's like I think the consensus from people I've saw is people think Souza's going to basically walk through Wyman but it's, usually when fights get announced I can I'm usually pretty good I can like pick who, who I think is going to win and stuff or like maybe think how, how the fight's going to go but I'm kind of this one's kind of weird for me I'm struggling to I, I can't picture how it's going. usually with, with Souza I think maybe we'll start the feet he'll maybe he'll work it to the ground obviously go for a sub yeah, that's what Souza does but for this one, I'm, I'm kind of hard-fetched to kind of find where it's going to go. And I don't know if maybe just because it's been announced so soon, I've not really had a chance to have a good look at it. But I'm interested to see how, how the other guys uh, feel about it. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's weird because of, because of the length of time of, of inactivity, really. Um, I mean, you made this fight... Uh, you made this fight round about the the Weidman Rockhold the first fight. You know, it's it, it's mm. a, possibly a wee bit more clear cut, but I mean, it does make him for an interesting contest nonetheless. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, Dave, what be yourself, mate? Dave, how do you how do you expect? Do you think Jackery will, will handle Weidman? It's, it's it's no doubt going to be a grappling contest at some point. How, how do you think it goes down, Dave, on uh, at MSG? I don't know how it gets there, but I think ultimately this fight ends with Jacare on top of Weidman. Uh, stopping him one way or another why whether it be by tko or submission and there's i'm not i don't want to burn too much of the airtime on this but what i will say is i i've never been really very high on chris chris weidman and, and don't get me wrong i you know he's an elite level talent guy without question uh one of the top middleweights for many years now and he's, he's earned that position but i find for me, at least, he's one of the fighters who sort of bought into his own hype, if I'm being completely <laughs> frank. Because, I mean, a lot of his name came over the Anderson Silva fights, both of them. And rightfully yeah. so. Again, no matter the, you know what, you know, the, how those fights ended, the reality is he stepped in with them twice and got his hand raised twice. But I, I, I've just always sort of viewed him as the uh, 
as a guy who sort of bought into his own hype because it just got to the point to where you know he got he had the win over Machida, he got the win over Vitor, but I've all even back in those days I was uh, I wrote a fan post I think in 2013 back there was a time when they were talking about doing John Jones versus Chris Weidman because that's how high his hype was. Hey. Uh, it, it, Referring to that as a super fight. And I remember writing this fan post. I think it was in 2014 going, man, if he steps in front of any of these fighters, I think I listed five. And I'll have to tweet this out later just to prove that I'm not just talking crap here. <laughs> but I said, I said, if he fights any number of these five fighters, he, and this was at the, like, you know, the peak of his, fucking, of his popularity, I was like, I think he's in for a tough night. And sure enough, he ended up fighting three of the fighters on that list and lost to three of them by TKO. I think he's amazing. I just think that Jacques Ray's a fight. He's always avoided. Uh, and I think it's Jacques Ray's fight all day. No, fair play, mate. Um, Matthew, what about you? What's your thoughts when uh, Jacques Ray and Weidman meet on Saturday? I think it'll be a Jacques Ray win, uh, but I don't think it's going to be easy as some people think it's going to be. I think Weidman, an elite, elite grappler and wrestler as well. So you can't really say that it's going to be an easy fight for him. Uh, I just want to say as well that we really needed Nate on this card. I think the fact that this is the co-main, this will be an interesting fight for people who enjoy grappling and jiu-jitsu. But you need, when you look at it as a co-main, you think, God, you could really do a Nate Diaz fight on this card. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. So it's disappointing that we don't have it. Uh, and it might it might be one of these fights that if it goes like the full three rounds and just grappling and jiu-jitsu, it might get booed and people <laughs> in the arena won't really appreciate it. Um, it depends how the rest of the main card fight go, fights go for me. I'm sort of 50-50. If I have some interesting fights before that, I can get involved and I can be okay. You know, we've had some good knockouts and stuff. But if we have a lot of uh, decision wins and stuff before it, I might be a bit ugh, a bit agitated by the, the jiu-jitsu for the full three rounds. But, uh, yeah, a Jacare win, probably. <laughs> but it's not going to be as easy as some people might think it will be, I don't think. You're right about the, the Diaz. Um, the notoriety or, or, or name value goes a long way, especially with how much um, this UFC-MSG relationship seems to be. You know, it's, it's, all, it's all big time for the minute. It's all big time for uh, for this last, you know, the first time out, obviously, was the Conor McGregor champ champ. Last year, okay, they, they, they knew they didn't have corner, but they tried everything to you know pack that card and and, and put in GSP in there. So yeah, it's it's a huge drop um, to this compared to to what we've seen previously. I still the, think we're ready first, for a good night's fight. So yeah, the, the first two MSG cards were stacked. Uh, whether you think GSP should have been in that spot last year or not doesn't really matter. He was there. He had the big name and the big draw, and the three you know results of those fights. The, you know the, the top three were insane. Like, it made for an insane night. And this, compared to those two MSG events, it just, it seemed like a massive drop. But, hopefully, the results will make up for that and we should be in for some good, uh, a good night. Yeah, same. Okay, guys, let's look at the main event. Quick turnaround for my balls is hot. <laughs> Derek <it> goes. <laughs> uh, for me, I, I can't see how he gets in done though against DC, but I'll, let's hear the guys' thoughts. We'll start with Dave this time. Um, Dave, what do you expect for the main event uh, for for the heavyweight title here? I don't really see how this doesn't end with Derek Lewis getting his hand raised because I'm completely joking. What's going to happen is <laughs> Daniel Cormier is going to go in there, take him down, and beat the piss out of uh, Derek Lewis. It, this fight is actually, to me, very reminiscent of Randy Couture versus James Tony. Now, obviously, James Tony is way more out of his element than Derek Lewis was, but it really does make me think of this fight in terms of it's just it's like a foregone conclusion. This set this matchup is made and it's planned, but it's like all of us, at least in the MMA community, it's like we're in on the gag. We know what's gonna happen. We know it's a setup. Uh, but um so, so it's sort of a, it's reminiscent of that. I'm not gonna say it's the exact same thing, but it does make me think of it. I, I can't I don't usually I'm not a like uh, Vegas odds guy, so I don't close uh, follow closely, but last I knew, I mean on, on the books, uh, Cormier was a very, very heavy favorite, and for good reason, because I love Derek Lewis, first of all. I'm a huge fan of his, and for a gigantic man, I mean, everybody talks about his power, and he does have massive power in his hands, but he's also very fast for a guy that size, and that sort of gets overlooked because of his finishes just sort of cloud everybody's judgment, and all they see is the big emphatic knockout. But right. um, So 
everyone's got a uh, is it got a puncher's chance, and so like that's why we're tuning in, isn't it? Right? Because we always everybody's gonna. I, I I mean I have to imagine we're all gonna be saying a variation, of the exact same thing here that. If Lewis can somehow manage to, to touch Cormier before he makes that first entry or gets him down, it's like, wow, he, he only needs to touch him once. But in all likelihood, we're going to see DC not take any chances uh, and just throw him down to the mat and hold him there en route to a TKO or a uh, submission victory. But I mean, please... Uh, Go ahead. What do you guys think? <laughs> well, yeah, let's hear the thoughts. Matthew, how about you? Is it Anne new or is it Anne still? It'd probably be Anne still. Uh, I see 90% of you know the MMA community on Twitter can, like almost writing off Derek Lewis uh, entirely. And you look at his uh, his cardio and you you almost almost write him off when you just look at his cardio alone. But I think in the last fight, he really showed that even in like 10 seconds away from the end of the third round, he could turn around and just knock you out. Uh, okay, he hasn't done it very often, I don't think. He's done it a couple of times. But DC shown in his fight against Stipe that even he just doesn't, he, he doesn't have to rely on just his wrestling. He also has strong, strong power in his hands. So it's going to be a great fight. I wouldn't say, I'm in no way saying it's going to be 50-50. I'd probably say it's 75 to, to DC and 25 to Derek Lewis. Um, it could happen for Derek Lewis. It could happen, but I, I'm I'm just sad that he's been pushed into a title fight so soon after his last fight uh, because he is entertaining, and I'm worried that he's going to like retire if he loses this after a title fight. Um, I don't want to lose him, to be honest. <laughs> it's going to be sad, but probably a DC win, and I'm a big fan of DC. So uh, it's just a shame that they've had uh, he's had his light heavy belt taken away from him. Um, so it looks like he's probably just going to take this with a victory and then face Brock Lesnar and then run into the sunset with his millions. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I find it hard not to let him have that, though. But I know you're saying, I know you're saying it. There is an element of sadness to it, isn't it? Um, aye, you're probably right, mate. Let's let's get Don's thoughts. Don, main event, who's walking out heavyweight champ for you? Mate? It's the, the build-up for this fight. It's, I find, interesting. Obviously, we were talking about the fighters pulling out of a UFC 230 injury, but... Do you think that like I find, I find it's Lewis that's kind of holding this card together because they had this like big card going up then obviously drop out recently but Lewis had that a big moment with the post fight interview and the finish and stuff uh, like, the the last one and like so many uh, people I was talking to they were just they, they only watched the UFC like for like, a McGregor fight or something like that it's something with a big huge name yeah. and they're all Derek Lewis fans now so I'm wondering if this if like the UFC have literally pulled pulled him into the office and go like, "We're struggling here. You're the hot thing. Here's money. Do you want?" Because obviously he wasn't you know, at, at, at the the post fight. There's no way he wanted that title fight. He even he even said to like, "You talk about title fight. Need to get my ass at the gym and stuff like that." Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking that I've got like, this. Just seems like they pulled him in and go like, "We're struggling. You're the hot shit right now. Can you turn over in like three four weeks notice?" So I don't, I don't think, I don't know if we'll retire after this because he probably, he probably knows this is just a, this is a stepping stone fight for DC just to keep him running till Lesnar can get back in there. So it's, it's real enough. I think Derek Lewis is holding his card together. But yeah, like we're talking, I feel this that yeah, this is pretty much going to be a DC win. Derek Lewis will have a go at it. Obviously, he's not going to go in there and back down. He'll swing. It was swinging until the the ref stops the fight or the bell goes. But yeah, I think DC DC's got this pretty much. Like, it's one of those ones. Yeah, he's got a punchless chance. That's really about it. Get, get some good a good ground and pounding, but I don't think uh, he's going to be able to hold uh, DC down either. He's like if this this goes to the mat, DC will just DC will end up top. But that's that's probably what's going to go. Going to yeah. Have. The, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, no, jump in. No, I was just saying. And the, the thing is, and this is no disrespect, but it's funny. Derek Lewis. I can't remember what press conference it was, but. Within his past three or four fights, at one point he was bragging about how he's the best blue belt at at his club, <laughs> right? which is awesome. I mean, that's very endearing and, and much respect. I mean, what it takes to get a blue belt is a real accomplishment. But that means, like in the world of jujitsu, like there's people at your local gym that in the jujitsu game would be schooling him. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> but the thing is, but, but with that being said, you know, uh, jujitsu is not an MMA fight. You know, jujitsu match is not an MMA fight, and that's. Yeah, he does have a vex factor, but yeah, it's just funny talking about the differences between the levels of grappling. I mean, I don't I mean, know. 
I don't know what I would do if uh, Derek Lewis flung up a triangle and got uh, DC stuck in it. I don't know. I'd pass yeah. out. I'd pass I'll out jump. Couch. I'm ju- I'll, I promise you guys right now, if that happens, I will jump out my front window. I promise you. <laughs> I know the sacrifices a blue belt makes. Got my blue belt this year. My meniscus is hanging off. So. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, no respect. I'm, I'm, I'm like a. I'm. A, I don't even got my blue yet. So I'm not talking shit on blue belt. <laughs> but at the UFC caliber versus an Olympic wrestler, it's just yeah. like well. You know, thing is also about Derek Lewis. We mentioned that um, he will swing for the fences. The thing that I'm impressed about him is we mention his cardio all the time and say his cardio isn't great, and even he admits it himself. But his strikes will be the same strength throughout the fight as we saw in his last fight against Volkov. It was a knockout in ten seconds before the end. So his cardio might not be great, but he still goes not maybe at the same pace, but his punches will still be as strong. Round three, round yeah, four. He, round he, five. Needs, he doesn't throw his punches like you will like the later. He just needs constantly go, go, go. He'll fling two or three strikes. If he not, if he's if he knows he's not really getting anywhere with it, he will stop and back off. And that's where he, that's where you get the kind of the Derek, Derek Lewis effect. Where he, he doesn't, he's not had success with that. Like exchange, so he'll maybe like take a few shots himself. He'll he'll look gassed and like oh Derek Lewis is phased. And then all of a sudden he comes back with another th- few big strikes, and all of a sudden his opponents yeah. in danger. Yeah, and that's just it seems the way he fights. That's totally his yeah. style. And remember, and remember, he's been put down by a big shot before with Anthony Johnson, so he oh, can oh, be yeah. touched. Yeah. Yeah, you're 100% right, mate. Um, guys, uh, just the second half of the show and my favourite answer on fan questions. Uh, just remind the panel, the one rule we have, um, don't need your tongue, guys. It's the, the floor is yours. Let's start with Facebook. Lots came in from Facebook this week. Um, starting with Ben Leonard, who asks, uh, does Cormier have his eye on another John Jones fight? Doubt Probably. Mm. Yeah, he, he'd be stupid not to really. Um, it'd be a big payday, and just the chance to avenge the first two, I think, would be uh, heavy on his mind. It has to be. Do you think a heavyweight? Uh, at this point, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, like, I don't think he's he's got his eye on one at light heavyweight. Then, like, but I think if they offered them heavyweight, he probably would take it. But it's one of those ones he's he's in the twilight of his career, and John Jones still is the young fighter, and it's. I would like to see the two of them maybe at the same skill level fight uh, we DC ten years ten years younger to see what happens, but it's it's still a young guy with all that talent fighting a forty year old guy. It's 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 a different kind of ballpark. That ten years of difference does really make an have an effect on a fighter, and I think that's why you see a lot of the the older guys sticking around at heavyweight because there is just a lot of a lot of striking. It's 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 not it's not as much a, as much as a fast paced fight as the the, the low divisions. And John, John Jones has also expressed interest in going to, uh, going up to heavyweight because he originally started the beef with Brock Lesnar before the DC thing came along. So you could okay. easily see it happening. So if like uh, I could see DC winning against Lewis, taking the Brock fight to get that money, and then maybe literally his retirement fight being against John Jones because then if he loses, he can shake John John Jones's hands in the middle of the cage and walk out and run into the sunset with yeah. the multi millions. Because Jones yeah. has said he's going to he's going to get older. And the weight cut's going to get harder, and that's when he'll move to move to heavyweight. Yeah, it's a nice, yeah. it's a nice uh, story. That's how the UFC used to do it. They were so good at telling stories, man. Yeah, so that, that would actually be that would be quite cool. Um, let's move on. Scott Smith uh, is asking: apart from a rematch with Horaguchi, who would you match up with, uh, Demetrius Johnson? I d- obviously now in one FC. Yeah. yeah I- to be honest, I'll be honest, I don't know enough no, about I one of them. None of them, man, no, absolutely. No, <laughs> thank no, 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 no. God, thank God. Because I, yeah. you see how yeah. all of a sudden wait and completely radio silent. Because I don't know, I don't know much about one FC. The cool thing about Demetrius Johnson going over there, though, is although I'm really sad to see him go, I'm excited to see what happens over there. And I'm going to learn about one FC now because I have sort of a vested, a vested interest in him. So I don't know who the hell he's going to be fighting over there, but I, what I do know is that I'm going to be learning about fighters in that organization very soon because of that. As well as Eddie Alvarez going over there, it must be a great move for the hierarchy at one FC. They brought in two world renowned ex UFC champions there mm-hmm. now, and yeah. they're going to put in a lot. They're going to pull in a lot of uh, American eyes and my eyes as well, because now they're both in there. I probably will watch it if I can. See the the company that uh, with a big UFC takeover. It was like a couple of years ago. With the, was it an Asian company? Uh, I'm wondering uh, if there's some sort of investment uh, deal with the company maybe own and it's some kind of maybe just relationship, right? yeah. 
But I'm well, I'm I'm in the same boat. Like one of one FC's always interested me. I've always like see, I've always heard good things about the shows and but it's one of those ones it's it's really hard to catch. Like you you finish a UFC uh, like six in the morning and one FC's going live and you're thinking I'll check the results. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll, if anything yeah. happens, I'll see it tomorrow. Uh, yeah. like any of the results. But I still don't really know who anybody is. I know Brandon Vera has been a really big is that name. What he in, is now, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, he's like the heavyweight champion, I think. No fuck. And I think he's been that the, that champion for a while. But I think the, the street. I think uh, uh, Dimitri he needs to be flung straight in for a title shot. I think yeah, it's. I, I don't even want to pronounce the guy's name. It's Gage. Gage. Oh, I'm not even going to. I'm going to try, but yeah, he's. <laughs> they need to fling him in against that guy. Kaji yeah. Estacal. Estacal. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. I, I don't think they give him like a tune up fight. It's it's Demetrius Johnson. Like, even though he's like maybe not had the most buys and stuff pay per wise in America, like they'll go crazy for him in Asia and he'll, he'll probably is be it the biggest card that winning. Is that as well? Is that the one where you can nail both? No, not elbow, knee on the ground or something? Is that one? Yeah, you can knee to the head. That I know. I think they removed the soccer kicks to the yeah, head, but if I'm not that. mistaken, you can knee to the head on the ground, which changes everything about the ground game. Everything. Eddie would do well there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right up history, yeah. Uh, let's move on. Michael Love. Because Khabib, DC are now champs, uh, UFC are looking at ground workers rather than big hitters like uh, Jones, JDS, Kane, etc. Seems to have been a big shift, don't you think? I think he's suggesting there's more grapplers now than strikers. I don't know. What do you guys think? Hmm. More grapplers than strikers. Grapplers yeah, taking I'm- over? I th- well, I th- I th- in today's uh, MMA climate, every- like you know, the champions stuff, generally everybody is good at everything. It's yeah, it's very like you used to get. Remember, like the heavyweight division was always the weird one where the uh, the fighter would maybe hold the belt for one or two fights and then lose it because it was always it's just big guys swinging. Yeah. Uh, anybody can get dropped, but the lower you go, the divisions like everybody. You, like if you walk in there, like in the lightweight division, and you're an elite striker, you're probably not going to uh, survive long because there's just that much talent. And like you look at the the champions these days, and I mean, even when, T- when Tyron Woodley became a champion, I think a lot of folk maybe thought, alright, he's got the belt, he's probably not going to hold it for long. And you just look, look what kind of streak he's on now. And I think every every like top five top ten stuff they're all elite fighters and it's like you don't find a lot of folk in those these divisions these days that are good at one thing mm-hmm. and if they're good at one thing they're really making the making the groundwork to better everything else yeah, justin gaethje to, justin gaethje springs to mind when you mentioned that uh you know he came in saying right i'm just gonna swing <laughs> anybody can hit me fine go ahead i can take it in lower organizations that might work but as we've yeah. seen in the ufc it doesn't necessarily work everywhere else. Because what is he one and two on one and two now, or uh, two, yeah, two and two, two or something two, like that? Two, two and two, yeah. Yeah, those lighter weight divisions, especially fifty five, is just a different animal altogether. That's where you know it's the most talent rich division. And man, when you get into the most talent rich division in a sport like this, yeah, one discipline like the striking. Uh, that, that's that's only going to carry you so far. Interesting question, though. I never really thought about that before. It's one that I'm going to have to put like a lot more thought into because I never really thought about it. But yeah, the, the, uh, the person who asked may have a point. Fair play. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this last name, but I'll give it a go. Uh, Heinz Weikert, Weikert, something like that. Uh, he's talking about Lowe and uh, Johnson. I nailed it. You go. Uh, on last night's uh, fight, honestly, there was no way a judge could have scored a uh, thirty twenty-seven to uh, Michael Johnson. Round one was Lobov, two was questionable, and three was Johnson. Twenty-nine, twenty-eight, I can see, but uh, not a uh, one thirty twenty-seven scorecard. I can't remember how they scored it. Is that how it went down? Now? <laughs> Yeah, I, I I literally don't even want to talk about Lobov. He just yeah. Look, the, the bottom line nerves. is, man, the guy's rotten. Uh, does anyone else yeah. feel the same way? <laughs> the guy, yeah. what's his record yeah. for fuck's sake? The guy is literally he's, he's a walking meme in the UFC. Everything you see, even when calls him the goat, and it's just this. He's oh, just this right, thing. He's go. yeah. And the only reason he's clamped down on that co-main co- spot is was he was he co-main before the whole McGregor thing? Uh, yeah. I was he co- like before the the bus incident and all that? I was, think so. Yeah. I mean, because it just I wouldn't put it past. Is it like Lobov? What he's, he he was an undercard fighter. I don't think he's had he's, he, unless he had, I don't know if he's had many or any main card spots. And all of a sudden, he's this big name because of what happens with McGregor. And then he was he's co main event in a show, even though it's not a big show. Yeah, but in, I was uh, like, it was, it was, it was just weird. They headlined yeah, last time, did not against Swanson. In 2017, he he headlined against uh, Cub Swanson. Yeah, <sighs> that's right. It's like you know, it's, way way outclassed, <laughs> way outclassed. Like oh, yeah, yeah. all five rounds. Yeah. yeah, fifty forty five. One judge scored it. 
Yeah, waste of space. So let's move on. All yeah. the same. With that being said, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. I don't wanna, I'm not going to use any more time on all above. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, Gage Castlebury. Khabib versus Askren. That's the fight to make. Somebody's O has got to go. And I don't know how to do that in weight classes with that, but um, Khabib, Askren, anyone want to see it? It's not that I wouldn't want to see it. I'd be happy to see it. But it's, for me, when I hear that matchup, that suggestion, I'm just like, eh, I'm not on board because, you know, uh, Askren's never fought 55 and Khabib, to my knowledge, has never fought 170. So it's just a thing where they're at these point in their careers. It just happens that in this point of time, yeah. because they're both, you know, heavy grappling guys and, and absolutely elite at what they do in terms of their grappling prowess, people just sort of mash them up but there's a million other fights I, there's a not a million you know there's many other fights i'd re- like to see Askren for his first fight in the yeah, ufc yeah, yeah. according to wikipedia yeah. if you believe it uh khabib was welterweight until his move to the ufc oh, wow. So, Damn, I, wow okay well i, I had absolutely no idea. wow yeah I, I didn't i didn't say that just to you know make it sound silly or anything but uh it, he has done oh, it no. and and i think I think, you know, because he has had a bit of issue with weight, only a little bit, but I think it's probably will suit him a bit better. It'd be an easier cut for him. Well, definitely That's easier. true. Yeah, like 15 pounds, yeah, that, that would definitely help for sure, man. Yeah, yeah maybe, it is the, maybe it is the fight to me. <laughs> having, having, having two undefeated elite level grapplers, to me... You could sell it like that, that of course, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you sell it right and, and sell it on, you know, don't try and get you know, out of hate like they did with the Connor fight, make it out of respect. Two undefeated guys. Yeah. I'm sold. Let's do it. Uh, last one from Facebook before we move on to Twitter. Michael Rowden, uh, some good fights to make, uh, but I think the trade is wrong. Probably going to end the flyweight division. They've wanted to ice it for so long. Trading one of the most mentioned fighters in the GOAT discussion essentially seals the deal. Why not just have both? I guess he means like why not just have Askren and 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 Mighty Mouse? Yeah, I'm never I've never been a fan of Mighty Mouse. I'm sorry, uh, I, I I'm not sad to see the back of him. Wow, <laughs> it's just a little darling. He always has been. Like, do you know what it is? It's because so many people tell me how great he is, and when I get something like that shoved in my throat, I instantly resist. I think I've just been like that since I was five or something, and that's all it comes down to. It's just my like I'm just resisting what people are telling me is great. So it's all just in my head, I guess. The Roman get... Reign, the Roman Reigns effect. <laughs> it, it really is, man. It really is. Don't get me wrong. Like if he's fighting, like he's one of those fighters. Like oh, I'm going to like I'm going to tune in to watch it. But it's never like he's always he's always on a pay per view where I'm more interested in a co main event or something else in the main card. It's never like oh, and you really need to catch the the DJ fight. But I'm always respectful. And what I want to see, like he's he had, he's had that many defenses and stuff. I always want to see what he does because he's had some like that. What was the like the kind of crazy armbar finish that he had? Like amazing, they oh, had, of course it was. Yeah, yeah. and Ray I'm Ball. always like, excited to see what kind of stuff happens, but I'm never overly excited to like. He's not. He's never the main reason why I'm tuning. Like I'd, I'd watch two guys, two guys fight in a car park if it was on pay per view, but I just sort of. I just he's never. He's like as he's fight, he's not a draw. He's never been a draw for yeah. for the UFC. I'm with. I'm completely with you on that sentiment about uh, DJ. Like, even though he's like this, you know, like you said, he's in that decision as the. Uh, sorry, a uh, discussion as as being uh, one of the greatest of all time because of his skill set. Technically, he is as a uh, all around mixed martial artist. Uh, but again, not one of those ones that I get really excited about. Like, I can't wait to, to tune in. But always enjoyable to fight. Something I think worth uh, mentioning, and I, I don't know. I don't really have any background information on this whatsoever in terms of what uh, DJ's motivation would be uh, to go to, you know, to change promotions. But, you know, after accomplishing what he has accomplished in the UFC, it's like, you know, after so long, I think maybe your goals change. And it's worth noting that his head coach, uh, I think from the very beginning of the time he walked into a gym, is Matt Hume, who's actually, at least from the listing I see online, is the vice president of operations and and competition at 1FC. Oh. I always, yeah, so I, I've always known that his f- head coach was involved with that promotion, uh, but I never knew it to what degree. So before this, before we got the recording, I jumped online to see if there's a title, and sure enough, there is. So I definitely feel like that plays a big factor mm-hmm. into it because he's had his eye on One FC, no doubt, for many years, as long as Matt Hume has been tied up into it. And you know, it's this is probably something he's been interested in doing for a long time. You know, when you've been in the UFC and you've dead, you know, you broke the records, and he's 
you know, there's only so many. I mean, he can reach the heights again. He can go back and win the title again. But he's basically done all he's going to do in the UFC. Uh, I sort of feel like he's just sort of curious about what he could do on the other side of the world. So. Uh. He, he always had a bit. He always had a, a bit of a weird relationship with Dana, wasn't it? It was always reported that he didn't feel like he got the the respect that he deserved, and the the division on a whole. You look at the division; it hasn't got many huge names and big draws. And DJ himself didn't have massive uh, success with like pay per view buys and stuff. And I'd never say that I'd want to see fighters cheating and stuff, but DJ had this squeaky clean image where you know he had his family, he trained hard, and he, you know, he broke records. He, it was so clean and he looked so yeah. nice. And he took his vitamins like, and said his prayers, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally that image. So you kind of think, oh, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but the, 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 if this, the, the manager obviously by 1FC, he knows they can take a uh, DJ into 1FC and probably have the biggest, the biggest show they've ever had. hundred percent. And you know, like the way like Asian people react to like celebrities and stuff like that, they go cr- absolutely crazy for this kind of stuff. And, <laughs> Like the 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 hype around DJ fighting in one AFC, but the it'll, it'll put one AFC because I think one AFC does really well over in Asia. It is yeah. really big over there, and this just it puts it even higher. Uh, so really, one, yeah. So really, DJ will get the respect that he deserved in the UFC. He'll get it over there. Yeah, he'll be, did, he'll, be, he'll be he'll be he'll be having to fight off fight off crowds in the street uh, doing stuff over there. Yeah. yeah, I I definitely feel like I, again. I, I mean, who the hell knows? But the vision I have is him going over there, being and being ecstatic with uh, the experience and how and you know his career over there. I, I think he's going to be super happy about it. Yeah, I'm still not going to watch it. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. <clears throat> I'll catch it in gift form or something. <laughs> yeah, same exactly, mate. Uh, let's move on to Twitter at White Boys Killer. I can't believe that's uh, that name's allowed. Um, Lewis, just a fat, sloppier bum version of Anthony Johnson. DC gonna KO him stiff inside three rounds. Hashtag and still. Thanks, mate. That was that question, but I guess that's a prediction. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Uh, at Lortoraga, Lortorga, Lortoraga. Uh, Lewis and Cormier, both fighters, made a controversy when they pulled off their shorts, towel gate, and hot balls. Which is the worst <laughs> crime? <laughs> That has to be the best uh, post-fight interview in the Octagon ever with, uh, with Lewis. Yeah. Let, me see, let, let me say this. I love it. That's a fantastic quote, and I tweeted this like a week ago or something. I, I think it's hilarious, and I laughed when I saw it. But, man, like the funniest part of that post-fight interview for me was when he went. He said to Joe Rogan, he's like, I want to come on your podcast and smoke weed with you. <laughs> I, I, I sort of thought – I'm surprised that didn't get more attention. I, that was the funniest part for me. But. And yeah, he prefaced it by saying, in a couple of weeks, I want to come. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I think he, that's that, that, that's one of the, the telling signs of that uh, main event that UFC 230. There was no talk about Lewis doing that. Yeah, he's, Lewis has finished that fight and he, he's already thinking, about, that's me, I'm in holiday, and I'm going to smoke some weed with Joe yeah. Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get <laughs> any attention at all because the balls was hot thing, but hey, whatever. Rogan's but, doing, I think Rogan was doing Sober October anyway, so he'd be sitting smoking himself. Well, yeah, that's right, it was Sober October. Over. Oh yeah, Lewis is definitely getting Lewis is definitely getting paid for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a quick turnaround. He's probably got a well. he's probably got, he's probably got to cancel like a load of holidays and and relaxing time. So he's getting paid because that's yeah. the thing. He's like he's he's just he's if if somebody turns around and it's like you 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 just finish your fight, you're you're still fight ready because he obviously he, he took a bit of damage in that fight, but I don't think it was anything too crazy. And then there's like somebody says, do you want to stay in camp for an extra two or three weeks? It's He's already in that mindset. It probably is a bit of a downer when you're like, "Fuck, I've got to." Mm-hmm. Like I already had in my head that this is this is me. This is my downtime now. But it, mm-hmm. a couple of sessions in the gym probably brings him back into into that training thing. But it, I still don't think having two training camps in a row is really going to help him against DC. No, I, forget, I, I forget where he said it, but I think on Twitter uh, earlier this week, I think he said he's literally doing twenty four seven cardio. So I think right. he's, he's taking it seriously, you know. And I, oh no doubt. See, yeah, I, as I seriously was, as he I, can, but it's uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think it was really telling when when um, when Rogan asked him about the title shot in that post fight interview. He's immediately like sort of rejecting it, being like, "No, no, no." That's sort of, and again, maybe I'm speculating too much, but I feel like that's something that was probably the rumblings that were being talked about. That hey, if you get this win, DC and, and MSG, and I sort of felt like that that was sort of him 
Mm. Uh, maybe sort of get he's straight away because he's no, I ain't ready for a title shot. But again, uh, money, money talks. But the yeah. same way every time somebody asks, asks Dana White, is, is this fight going to happen? Is like, no, there's no talk of that. And then three days later, it's announced. <laughs> exactly. You just don't get an answer out of Dana anymore. He's like, we'll, we'll see. It is what it is. We'll see. That's all you, that's all you just need to know. <laughs> Doesn't do the scrums, he just hits you with those sound bites. Guys, we've got one more from Twitter before we wrap up, and it's at for Elf for Elf. Uh, it's on uh, Connor's breakdown uh, of his fight with Khabib. Uh, and she says, uh, Here's the clear breakdown Irish Chicken got dominated, mauled, and submitted by undefeated champ. That's it. There's no need uh, for excuses, and I hope he got humbled. Connor is turning into Joanna Janjacek. He's in complete denial, I think. What's your thoughts? I saw the, the thing pop up, but by that point I was done with the face, so I didn't even bother reading it. What, it was like it was like, like, like the last this week sometime that thing came out. He's breakdown. I think it was the start of uh, last week, wasn't it? Was it the Monday yeah, Tuesday? Yeah. It, it popped up, and I was like, I'm, 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 that, that face already a distant memory to me. I'm moving on to something else. I also feel as though, like at least for me, I can't speak for all of us, of course, but I'm so you know, there's just a bit too much self celebration and long winded posts. Uh, from from all people across social media, but I find especially on MMA Twitter, it's like every third message from certain fighters is like this big long winded, uh, you know, message thing. So it's, I was like, you guys, I, I saw this big message and you know lost my attention immediately just because I'm like, well, you know, it just doesn't have the same effect when you see the this day in day out from from everyone. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably what does it for me. Like every every Facebook group or message board, and it's it's people that have got no clue. Like what they're talking about, posting in capital letters, Khabib, Khabib, the champion, and all that. It's like you just you get sick of it. You're like, oh, I'm done with this until the next time these guys get announced to fight. He's fighting Floyd Mayweather, don't you know? Yeah, that ain't. <laughs> so, I, I think he on... picked up in that. I was watching the news going to work the other morning, and uh, Mayweather will fight in Russia or something like that. And I'm like, fuck <laughs> off. He's not. Mayweather has this uh, habit of just latching on to like the biggest name in the UFC at the moment and trying to get a fight out of it. McGregor, it worked because McGregor was sort of looking for it as well. Uh, with Khabib, it, it could happen because I'm, I'm I'm hearing a lot of of Khabib's team coming out and saying, "Oh, we think Khabib is looking at the retirement plan in the next couple of years." So it could happen, and that retirement talk could be similar to what Ben Askren did, ask, you know, suggesting retirement just to get out. Uh, who knows? I mean, I've, I've I've seen a lot of people on Twitter comment about the Connor fight, and you've got to know who to look at and who not to look at. I don't look at all the comments because it's just full of you know trolling rubbish. I, I would like to see their second fight personally because I I really got invested in the and in thinking that there was hate there until I heard the the audio of the Khabib Connor fight where Connor where like Khabib was chatting shit to him on the ground and Connor said Do it, you know it's all business you it's know chill business. out. Yeah. I yeah. kind of thought. Ah, uh, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks a bit because I, I was pulled in. But, as soon you know. as, as soon as I announced that, yeah, like that, oh, Khabib might be fighting Mayweather, I was like, always not. There's no chance this happened. Like uh, Khabib, Khabib gets just wiped, wiped clean uh, for Mayweather. But then I was, then I, it came to me, what if uh, Khabib gets this big suspension? Can he still, can he still box if he's suspended from MMA? Nah, think, that's uh, man. That's the that's the Nevada Athletic State Commission. They're yeah. gonna sweep. They're gonna sweep that under the rug. Don't even sweat it. <laughs> yeah, like, we like, wouldn't even know this thing was a thing <laughs> in, in a month. Don't worry about it. They're just waiting for the dust to settle. One way or another, it's gonna be sweeped under the rug. Don't even sweat it. The brawl. The brawl wasn't that. If we look at it now, uh, you know, they when it was happening, you know, Joe Rogan said, "Oh, this is the biggest, most disgusting thing in the UFC." Mind you, they were saying that about the bus attack a couple of months before that when Connor attacked the bus. Yeah, and they and used it was promo promos. for the fight, exactly. Yes. Yeah, uh, it, and when you look back at it, it wasn't, it wasn't massively bad. The thing it is, was, if, if this had happened backstage, eh, there would have been a slap in the wrists. Dana White would have made a thing, says, oh, we'll find these guys that's in this, they're suspended for, for a month or something. It would have been something yeah. stupid like that. And if you've been to like local shows, you see shit like this happen all the time rivalries between gyms there's maybe a bit of a scuffle and it's like it gets separated quickly and you know what you do it just it happens these guys are all training they're all fighting stuff like this happens I think the, the bad point for this thing was that it was it was because the public got involved watching those uh, clips like after, like I stayed up to like 7 8 in the morning to see what was happening yeah. and watching random clips of Facebook of just people getting knocked out in the yeah, the, the the corridors and stuff that was crazy. I was yeah, in a group that... convoy with two folk that were there, and they were saying it's absolutely pandemonium here. And I think that's what the yeah, that's, that's what the problem is. Yeah, absolutely, mate. absolutely. 
Um, well, there you have it, guys. UFC 230 at Madison Square Garden, just around the corner. We're excited for it. Thank you so much for all those listening, and of course, thank you for all those who got in touch with their uh, fan questions. Let me finally extend my thanks to the panel here today, starting with Mr. Matthew Penny. Matthew, a pleasure for your time, mate. Let our listeners know all about purely MMA, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me on, John. Thanks to the panel. Uh, it's been a great conversation again. I look forward to coming on every time that I'm invited on. Uh, so you can catch me at Purely MMA on Twitter and PurelyMMA.co.uk. We've got um, a, a host of your show, uh, a, a panelist that's regularly on for you, G, who is on for us now, writing for us and uh, and doing some stuff. And we've got some plans for the future. So uh, check us out on Twitter, Purely MMA and PurelyMMA.co.uk. Superb stuff. Uh, to Don Wilson, always a pleasure, mate. Letting us let's know all about Fight Talk Scotland, mate. Fight Talk Scotland on Google, you'll find a list of us. We're pretty much every everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's easy to find. It's, it's not as if we get some kind of like MMA name. It's just Fight Talk Scotland. It's easy to find. Right, well said. Finally, to Dave knows where the MMA is. Dave, let the Marshall Arts Chat subscribers know all about the wonderful work you do online, sir, and, and where to check out, my friend. Appreciate that very much. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Dave Knows MMA. That's N O S E M M A. And yeah, you know, uh, once a week I publish a piece of sort of, I guess, a short form audio, audio video podcast. And uh, you can find that on my Twitter or at MMA Latest. And uh, can't thank you enough again for, for the invite. A lot of fun being on here. Uh, it's a great time. I appreciate it very much, guys. If you've liked this podcast, be uh, sure to subscribe on iTunes. Uh, Just search for Martial Arts Chat. Um, You can like us on Facebook as well. Uh, It's facebook.com forward slash Martial Arts Chat. And if you want to subscribe to us on Twitter, it's at Martial Arts Chat. I keep getting told I I should go on Instagram, but I've not got that good a camera. But uh, (laughs) yeah, I'm John Bob McElroy. Catch you next time on the round table. Thanks, guys. Thank you.